Hey guys, Brian here from 5 to Go. Here to talk to you today about entertainment and gaming and technology while on the road. Uh, this actually kind of comes from a really good discussion that we are having on Discord right now. Um, if you're not on our Discord server, it's 5 to gocom slash Discord, and you can join in on conversations like that and all sorts of other conversations. Uh, but a lot of people have been asking us what we do about streaming, what we do about gaming, and all sorts of stuff like that while we're on the road. And we did a little bit of poking around, and nobody really talks about that in RV videos. And we don't know if it's because people don't game and watch TV, which we seriously doubt, or if it's because people think that it's some kind of bad topic to talk about. Uh, we all play games. We all watch TV. We all sit around and watch YouTube like you're doing right now. So let's talk about it. First up, let's talk about streaming. Uh, first of all, we cut the cord back in 2006, I think. We got married in 2006 and got our first house. When we moved into that house, we didn't bother with cable. We just got an internet connection, and then we've been streaming everything since then. So Netflix, Hulu, uh, lately, obviously, Disney+, Plus, uh, Amazon Prime, stuff like that. We stream all of that through Fire Sticks, and we have one behind this TV here. Uh, it's kind of crammed in there, but I tried to get as good of a shot of it as I could for you. Uh, basically, it's just a stick that plugs into the HDMI in port on your TV, and you feed it some power from USB, and it gives you access to everything you need. And it's a really, really great way to watch basically everything streaming from the internet. We know a lot of people like to use the Apple TV. Some people use Chromecast. We just like Fire TV. We also have added a sound bar to our TV because the sound coming out of these things, you guys already know, sound coming out of TVs is pretty terrible. Sound coming out of a TV in an RV is even worse. So that sound bar at least throws that sound across the room towards you when you're sitting on the couch over here like Vector is. And then on the TV in the back room, uh, more often than not, Aaron and I are out here watching something on our lovely new couch and the kids will be in our room on the smaller TV. They'll probably be watching either stuff we pull through over the air because there's an antenna up there, or uh, if we're in a campground like this one that has a cable connection, we'll hook up the cable. They can watch like Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, or whatever. Uh, but when we aren't using either of those things, there's also a fire stick on that TV, as well as a USB hard drive that I've loaded up with movies that they love, and they can just fire up that TV, watch whatever they want while they're in there. And uh, the other alternative is their, um, their play pads, which we'll get to in a minute here. So you might be asking, how are you getting internet? Um, well, we have a grandfathered in unlimited AT&T hotspot plan. So unfortunately, that's not something you can go out and buy on your own. And we're going to do a completely separate video all about getting internet while on the road. But again, if you jump into our Discord, we have a gear and technology channel that everybody in there, uh, I would say half of the conversation is probably about how to get internet while on the road. So if you don't want to wait for another video or go searching for anything else, just hop on Discord, check that out. There's a lot of great resources in there. We've pinned some good links in there. So hop in there if you want to learn more about that. That being said, with the plan that we have, we have no trouble streaming Netflix on here and the kids watching stuff on YouTube in the back. We could do it all just fine through our hotspot, through our AT&T cellular plan. Obviously, we have to have a strong signal in order to do that. Uh, at this campground, we have a very strong signal because we're basically surrounded by neighborhoods and there's a major road right up front. Uh, we have been in some areas where the cell signal is not great, and that's why we have the hard drive with movies on it. That's why we have play pads. That's why we download games and movies ahead of time. Uh, so if you get into areas like that where you're not going to have a cell signal, you're probably going to need to have a backup plan like that. Some campgrounds do offer Wi-Fi. More often than not, you're going to have to pay a couple bucks a day to access them. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. We have been in about 160, 170 campgrounds now, and I think there have been maybe three or four that had really good Wi-Fi, and maybe double that that had serviceable Wi-Fi. It's going to vary a lot depending on the campground, the location, what site you are in the campground. We've been in some campgrounds where we are parked right next to the little Wi-Fi repeater and it is a fantastic signal. We've been in other campgrounds where you can't even figure out where the antennas are 
and you're not getting anything. So you really cannot rely on campground Wi-Fi. So you're going to want to figure out some kind of cellular service or just be disconnected. All right, so let's talk about gaming. All five of us in this family are pretty heavy gamers. I've been playing games my entire life. As far as I know, erin has been playing games for most of hers. Uh, so that was an important thing for us. So three years ago, when we got rid of all of our stuff, sold our house, bought an RV, and started traveling around in it, gaming is not something that I wanted to leave behind. So I needed to figure out ways to bring what I enjoy playing along with us. First of all, playing on a laptop, obviously, is a very good solution. Um, I have been building PCs my entire life, so going from uh, building gaming PCs to kind of being restricted to buying a gaming laptop uh, was a weird concept to me. Three years ago, gaming laptops were just starting to get really good. Uh, this one right here is fantastic. It actually has an RTX card in it, so I can play Control with RTX on, and it looks amazing. So there are really, really, really good laptop solutions out there if you want to play games on a PC. And other than this one, I have my old laptop that still is way more than capable of running games like World of Warcraft and anything else. Um, Aaron and Tara and I play World of Warcraft together. With that cell package that I was talking to you about, we have absolutely no trouble playing online together. We can even all three have the game running at one time and have Netflix streaming. So. Uh, games really don't take up a lot of bandwidth, so that's not something you really, really have to worry about. If you're heavy into, like, super competitive, like, Twitch gaming, you're gonna be more worried about latency versus bandwidth. Now, aside from gaming on PCs, mobile gaming is also something that we do a lot of. Uh, you heard me mention, uh, our kids have play pads. These are actually the Amazon Kindle Fire Kids Edition tablets. Uh, they come in this nice, bumpy case. Uh, it's it's very soft and very... Uh, they drop these all the time. They fall out of the car all the time, skid across parking lots. They're just fine. And the nice thing about these is if... Uh, I think they come with a two-year warranty where if the screen breaks or they get wet or they just stop working or if anything goes wrong with them, you just tell Amazon something's wrong with it, something broke, whatever, and they send you a brand new one for absolutely free within that two-year window. And uh, you might be saying, that's too good to be true. It is true. We've done it uh, five or six times between Brooke and Ben over the last few years. So this is a fantastic, fantastic deal. Uh, they do cost a little bit more than just a base Kindle, but they cost less than two. So free replacements are a good thing. Tara has a Switch. Well, actually, it's my Switch. But Tara's been using my Switch. She plays Mario. She plays Zelda. She plays all the lovely Switch games. Uh, that is obviously a really, really, really good solution for traveling and gaming. Uh, we've actually been in campgrounds where they've set it up on the picnic table and played Mario Kart with three or four kids. Great, great system, but you already knew that. The big one is if you want to bring something like an Xbox or a PlayStation. Probably the hardest thing about that is figuring out where to store it and where to put it out when you want to play it. In our last rig, we had a travel trailer, and I was not able to leave it out somewhere where it was always hooked up. So there was a cabinet down by the fireplace that the Xbox fit into, and if we wanted to hook it up, I just had to pull it out, put it up on the counter, plug it into the TV, and it was good to go. In this rig, there is a cabinet over top of the dinette where I can actually leave the Xbox and the little charging cradle for the controllers, and there's a power strip up there and the reason it can be up there and it can stay up there is because the way this motorhome is wired, there's an HDMI cable going from that TV behind you all the way over to that cabinet. So all I have to do is turn that power strip on, fire up the Xbox, grab the controller, and we're good to go. Uh, if your rig doesn't have any HDMI cable run some crazy way like this one because it had an entertainment center built into it over there, uh, you're just going to have to figure out where to store the thing. Running them, power-wise, is fine. Uh, internet, it'll connect to your internet connection. All of that is fine. It's really the big trick with those is figuring out a place to put them where they can run. And also, heat is an issue. So whenever that thing is on, the cabinet is open, and if it gets too hot, I could even clip a little fan on there to draw some air out. Um, I do know the new systems that are coming out, the, what is it, the Xbox One X and the PS5, those guys are going to run really hot. So putting them in a cabinet like that, 
is probably not a good idea, but if you have just like a little slice of counter or maybe find some way to like add a ledge on a wall next to the TV, something like that, uh, heat should not be a problem. And lastly, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is a, a thing that I just discovered on Amazon a little while ago. Um, this is Ben's Playpad. And you'll see the, uh, the port here. It's a USB-C port and it has this weird little thing in it. This is a magnetic charging system that I just discovered and I think it is fabulous. I have it on my phone. I have it on my headphones. Um, basically I have it on everything that is USB-C, micro USB, or lightning. So even on uh, Tara's iPad, uh, Aaron's phone has it. We use it on basically everything because how it works is you have the little connector that goes in here and it's magnetic. And then you have special cables that come with it that are also magnetic that snap into that little thing. And then the other end is just a normal USB plug. These are the connectors right here in a baggie. Uh, each cable comes with one USB-C, one micro USB and one lightning connector. Uh, so basically, we just have these cables everywhere, and no matter what device we have floating around, because the device-specific plug is already in there, the cable works with all of our devices. So no more of that, is that a USB-C, is that a lightning, like having all of these cables floating around everywhere. We've just replaced everything with these, and we're good to go. It's fantastic. They work on the car, they work everywhere. And even better is uh, our kids don't treat plugs quite the best so they would uh, have the plug in here and then to pull it out instead of just you know pulling it out they would like yank on it sideways or whatever so they were breaking cables left and right a uh, nice thing about this is it just snaps on and then snaps off like they they literally cannot break this the magnet goes before the plug does so I really 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 like these there's a link to these down below you should replace all of your cables with these I've been using them for a couple weeks now. They charge everything. They even do quick charging. Like if you have Samsung devices that do quick charging, they work with that. I, two, three, four, five, six thumbs up. I think they're fantastic. Okay, so that's uh, entertainment and gaming on the road. I hope you found some of this useful. Uh, it's not truly groundbreaking stuff, but it is not something that anyone's really talking about. So we wanted to start talking about it. And I want to continue this discussion with you in Discord. I keep talking about Discord. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It is completely, completely free. 5 togocom slash Discord. Hop in there. Aaron and I are in there all the time. We've got about 600 other people in there all the time talking about gaming, talking about gear, talking about uh, Disney. We have a Disney section. We have Family Circle where we talk about traveling as a family on the road. We have a game room section where we're going to be talking about gaming. And we have a special channel just for our Roadrunners, which is what we call our patrons that support us on Patreon. So if you want to support us there, no pressure. You certainly don't have to. Uh, but if you do, there is a special room just for you guys. And uh, otherwise, uh, that's about it for this video. Coming up next, I think there's going to be a tour. What do you think? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Keep your masks on. Stay safe.